Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another edition of our webinar series, Inside Immigration. Today, we're joined by partner Shoshana Green and Permanent Residence Practice Director, Halit Stein. Please feel free to ask any questions throughout the webinar via the pop-up text bar on the right side of your screen. We'll do our best to address your questions at the end of the webinar. If the panelists do not get to your question, please feel free to contact them through the information provided on screen now. And with that being said, I'm going to hand things over to our panelists. Thank you, Thanks. Stephen. Thanks, Stephen. How's everybody today? Halid, how are you? I'm good, Shoshana. How are you? I'm good. So we've got an interesting agenda today. I think the fact that the um, government announced the new immigration minister is hot off the press, the news, and then we have a few different um, individuals running different ministries that affect our practice. Halid, maybe you just want to go through each of them to let the uh, listeners know. Sure, so uh, announced yesterday, new Minister of Immigration, Sean Fraser, um, who is a former MP from Nova Scotia and uh, was actually a lawyer as well before he went into politics. Um, and he has been in politics since 2015. So um, we will we'll see what happens there. Um, Marco Mendocino, the former immigration minister, is moving to public safety, so he will be the new public safety minister. Um, Bill Blair will be minister of emergency preparedness, and um, Carla Caltro, minister of employment, workforce development, and disability inclusion. Um, we may uh, deal with her in some of our um, ESDC applications and LMIAs. Um, and Minister of Labor, Labor um, Stephen So Regan. Yeah, it should be it should be interesting the fact that they're bringing in um, a new MP to be the Minister of Immigration. Will it result in significant changes? Probably not. But um, the good news is that this um, member Fraser, um, he's a former lawyer and he's been active in the human rights activities the UNHCR in the past. So we'll see what perspective Minister uh, Mendocino prior was a, a crown attorney and came from that perspective. So it's always it's always really um, it, it, it's it's beneficial to have an individual who understands the world of, of law with respect to the intersection with immigration. So hoping for the best there. And then it, and then we do have some consistency as far as having the former Minister of Immigration now work in security, um, and then member Blair, who obviously is former Toronto um, chief of police, who also continues in, in a similar element. So only time will tell. We'll, we'll see what happens again, a minority government, but, but who knows? We'll see what happens. Okay, moving on to always a hot topic, vaccinations. Um, some changes coming up that are really interesting, I think. Uh, the fact that um, by the end of the month on Halloween, <laughs> right before, was it the 30th or the 31st? 30th, right before. The 30th. So Halloween Eve is going to be spooky because um, every single individual who boards a plane within Canada, and that also means leaving Canada, has to be fully vaccinated. So I'm not sure many Canadians necessarily understand that limitation we'll call it as far as their ability to leave leave the country via a plane and their own their only option for unvaccinated individuals um, may be entering by land to the united states but again um, the u.s is changing their rules as far as vaccination in november you want to touch on that yeah well you know with Canada also, it's interesting, like it, it's going to apply to individuals 12 and up. So basically anyone eligible for the vaccine. Um, and you have to be fully vaccinated to board, um, you know, as Shoshana said, both domestic and international flights departing from Canadian airports. Um, also to get on a train or a cruise ship once uh, cruise ships start departing again uh, from ports in Canada, you'll need to be fully vaccinated. Um, and, and that fully vaccinated means uh, a vaccine that's accepted by Canada. So you're talking about Pfizer, Moderna, uh, AstraZeneca, or the Johnson & Johnson, and you have to have received both of the doses 
um, at least 14 days prior to the day you're traveling. So that 14 days, um, you got to be careful because let's say you get your second dose on November 1st, um, the first day you can actually travel would be November 16th, so the day after uh, 14 days have passed. Um, and you have to carry with you your, your official proof of vaccination as well, which differs by province um, and differs by country. Yeah, it'll be really interesting because individuals, I mean, both Canadians who aren't vaccinated may not realize this limitation. And then individuals who come to Canada temporarily, um, work permits, study permits, visitors, if they're not fully vaccinated, they've gone through the quarantine. If they want to leave, they have to get vaccinated while they're here in the country. So it's kind of a backhanded way to vaccinate more of the population, which... Yeah, but there, there will also be a uh, transition period. So from October 30th to November 29th, um, if you're not vaccinated, you have a little bit of time still, and you can instead show uh, that you've taken a COVID-19 molecular test within 72 hours prior to boarding your, your flight uh, or your train. And um, that will be accepted until November 29th. Um, but starting November 30th, there's going to be very, very limited exceptions um, to that vaccine requirement. So basically, uh, they're talking about, you know, emergency travel or, or individuals who are medically unable to get vaccinated. But uh, we still don't have specifics on what those exceptions will look like. Should be spooky. Should now, be. <laughs> next one, visitor visas. New portals, exciting. Yeah, so so there is a new visitor visa portal that's uh, announced, and it seems like these days we're getting new portals um, on a regular basis. Uh, so we are starting to to use this visitor visa portal, um, and the hope is that uh, that will help deal with some of the backlog in, in processing, and these applications will be processed a little bit faster. Yeah, well, fingers crossed for the technology. Fingers see crossed. what happens. Yeah. So permanent residents, keep trucking along. Um, we've got uh, the continuation of the government focusing on um, those individuals in Canada. We haven't had a Canadian experience class draw through Express Entry for over a month now. So yeah, it's actually we're at maybe. six weeks. So this is, I think, the longest stretch we've had um, between Canadian experience class draws. Yeah, it's interesting. Maybe they're trying to catch up on the backlog because applications are being processed. People are getting put through the system and they are trying to get back to their initial goal of six months. I mean, some are really quick and some are super slow where we have to take the government to court. Um, yeah. So it's interesting times. Who knows when the next draw will be either for a Canadian experience class or even federal skilled worker. But the provinces are still giving opportunities for foreign applicants through their um, individual nomination program. So that's kind of a little trickle in the background, but it's certainly not uh, the focus of permanent residents, people abroad, which is... And it, it'll strange. be interesting to see, you know, we, with federal skilled worker, we haven't had a draw at all this year. Um, so when whenever we do have a draw, it will be interesting to see where the cutoff scores will go. Um, and for CEC as well, I mean, six weeks is kind of the longest stretch we've ever seen. Um, without a draw, so we can probably expect an increase in, in the scores once they start drawing. Only time will tell. Someone knows the secret behind the doors. Maybe the fact of the election, maybe they want to get the new minister's perspective. I mean, the government isn't coming back to sit, I think, till the end of November. So right. lots of changes up in the air, but we'll we'll see what happens. But the good news is that they are processing those within the system itself, applications are starting to get moving along. And then there's the end result, the landing itself, the virtual landing, which is a very interesting process. Government keeps changing uh, the mechanism to transition and grant permanent residency to those individuals in Canada. And then it becomes a, a fine balance. But people are excited they're permanent residents, but then they don't necessarily realize how long it's going to get. That touches on our number five point, uh, the card issuance, because when they send you an email, congratulations, you're a permanent resident today, people don't realize it. What is it, about three, four months now? Well, we're at, currently it's been 120 days processing, yeah. Yeah, so that's how long it's going to take before you can come back to Canada on an airplane. 
if you're lucky enough that you can enter the United States, you have the potential to drive back into Canada or walk. But the reality is you're going to need that card. And there is a gap of three to four months. Uh, sometimes it's going quicker. Again, there's inconsistency as far as processing timelines. We can't, government is all over the place when it comes to the timelines with these card issuances. Hopefully that gets better. Maybe they're focusing on it now. Who knows? But yeah. Sort of the Especially, kind of you know, if, if you're landing between uh, now and the holidays and you've travel planned, it's it's something you want to keep in mind. Um, you may want to request to postpone the landing, um, you know, because if, if you need to get on a flight, you may not have the PR card in time. And really the only other way aside from, you know, walking or, or driving in through the U.S. Um, would be to apply for a PR travel document and processing times on those have been pretty inconsistent um, so could delay your your return if that's what you're relying on yeah the travel document process is completely um unhelpful and unpredictable the government may has made that basically uh, non-existent uh people can't rely on it like if you have a certain timeline that you need to return to canada it's impossible to give you that certainty that you can get on that flight so uh, it's a bit of a messy area now. Hopefully, things will improve. I think I, Absolutely. I, when I jumped ahead to number five. Maybe we'll go to the parent yeah. and sponsorship sort of end yeah, on so that note. Dead, deadline for the uh, people who received invitations under the, the recent uh, draw for the parent grandparent sponsorship program is coming up December 6th. Um, and those applications are all being filed through the new PR online portal um, so this is different than than the portal that's used for express entry applications um, so just you know it, it is a fairly new portal i caution everyone to make sure you leave enough time um, to to get those applications in before december 6th um, new systems can be glitchy from time to time and uh, especially since there there will be a large volume of applications filed over the next couple of weeks um, you know, we, we want to make sure that there are that there is sufficient time to get those in uh, and avoid any or deal with any glitches. We don't have any info yet on 2022 um, what the parental sponsorship program will look like uh, or when that might open. Yeah, it's um, again another portal. We'll see what happens, and it's it's separate from all the other ones. So a real uh, um, interesting mix of mechanisms that the government is, is putting out there and we'll see how they all come together hopefully they all synchronize in some way <laughs> hopefully <laughs> yes fingers crossed so Stephen, i think we're done on the uh agenda i guess we can take a, there's a couple questions people have asked um maybe i'll take one and you take one halit first question sure. is um regarding tfws who've been vaccinated but not with one of the four currently approved in Canada, do they have to be vaccinated again? Um, well, it's interesting if you are vaccinated with um, products that are not recognized by the Canadian government, and if you then come to Canada, you quarantine, you can still come to Canada, but then if you want to leave Canada under the new rules, it appears to be that you will have to get vaccinated um, with Canadian approved vaccines in order to board the flights to depart. So it's an interesting scientific experiment that the government is yeah. mandating. Or you just stay here and don't leave, but that's not realistic for most well, people. Well, I'm sure we'll get, you know, some more guidance on that as, as this gets implemented. Um, you know, as we've seen, things are constantly changing in terms of travel rules and uh, guidance that, that's being given. So maybe a little bit of a mess uh, initially and, and then you know, hopefully over time we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. All right, you got the other one here? I don't see another question, maybe you wanna read it out. Will, the, will Canadian work permits be processed through a new visa portal? We, we don't have an answer to that right now. Um, right now, it looks like they are still being processed through uh, the, the old portal. Yeah, and then there's another question about when the Americans open, um, I guess, land borders, non-essential travel, would those living in the border community still be required to present negative PCR tests obtained within 72 hours? If the Americans are 
are have indicated that when you enter by land and you're fully vaccinated, you will not need a test. But Canada still requires testing to come back. So nothing has changed as far as the Canadian requirements when it comes to testing. The American but if you're, different. yeah, but if you're living uh, on a border community and you're going for a short trip, less than 72 hours, um, you can actually take your test in Canada before you go um, and use it when you're re-entering, as long as it was taken. Mm -hmm. Right, but Canada hasn't dropped any uh, testing requirements as of today. We're still right. there. We're still there. All right, I think that's it for today. Yeah. Yep, it looks like that's all the questions. Uh, so I would like to thank everyone for attending today's webinar and then a special thanks to you, Shoshana and Halit for sharing your expert knowledge today. If you'd like to discuss today's topics in more detail, please reach out to book a consultation. You can, follow, uh, you can find Shoshana and Halit's contact information on screen now. Uh, I'd also encourage everyone to sign up to our e-alerts and follow us on social media just to keep up to date on the latest developments inside Canadian immigration. And until next time, everybody, stay safe. Okay, take care. Thank you.